what's going on everyone in this video i'll be going over sat may tips to make sure you get a 1600 on the exam without question the sat may is the next sat exam that you all will be taking as there is a gap in april i know some schools might administer their respective sat in april but for most of you you'll be facing your next sat the month of may so you have at least a month from now to really study and make sure you get the highest score you possibly can and for those of you who don't know already, it took me about three weeks to study for the SAT and get a pr pretty good score. So I'm pretty sure when you guys have four weeks, which is a whole you know, another week of studying, you guys can improve whatever your score is to whatever goal score you have. Now, I've seen students go from a thousand to a fourteen hundred within three weeks. So it's definitely doable. And how to do something like that, I'm going to break down right now. So first, let's start off with the math. All right. So with the SAT math exam, whether it be digital or non-digital, you have to do certain things to make sure that you constantly remember the SAT math patterns, the tips, the tricks, and really how problems are written because with the sat math exam and even the reading the problems are pretty much the same they're just worded in different ways but more so for math it's like the problem is literally exactly the same but they might switch one number and the person's name that way the college board isn't convicted of hey you're reusing sat problems which in the past they have been so how to study for the sat math section now there's a bunch of resources online like there's the the sat math books like the sat math panda book which is i think the personally the best sat math book you possibly can get um there's also my sat math course which is in the link in the description below and there's a sale running on it right now and it's done like so many people have got it already and it's had like a five or 4.5 star review so i really recommend checking it out and if it's hard for you guys to get it at the price it's at just contact me i might be able to work out a deal for you but another thing that i personally recommend and for those of you've been following my channel for a while i've always had sat math notes as well and these notes is basically just a study sheet like a study cheat sheet that has all like the tips and tricks i've written down so you can constantly rehearse them because yeah you might be watching a course and getting the videos and like going through the problems and understanding the mindset sometimes you just want a brain refresher right some like something that you can read off before you go to sleep or when you wake up in the morning and you just read all the the tips and tricks and patterns and quiz yourself on it and it's good to have a cheat sheet like that and let's say you don't want to purchase a cheat sheet then by all means i highly recommend creating your own and sometimes creating your own is even better than using someone else's because one you know where everything is and the second reason is you are actually updating the cheat sheet yourself as you learn new tricks learn new tips learn new patterns so that way it's just like when you do that you understand things more and you remember things much better right versus using someone else's notes and that's why teachers always say write down information right don't copy other people's notes because it's really not going to help you learn but for some people just having that refresher having that brain dump already made and not having to go through the process of generating like hundreds of tricks is you know better right and they'll they'll rather hide the cheat sheet and personally i would probably make my own cheat sheet but i understand based on time based on whatever's going on in your life you just might want to cheat sheet by yourself so uh, i have that in the description below as well and now another big thing you guys gotta do is to do digital sat math problems because if you guys haven't noticed digital sat math problems are worded just a little bit different than your standard sat but over the next year and like months really the sat the regular sat is going to transition into digital sat math problems like the problems will start being the same and they'll be worded like the way they are worded on the digital exam because like I said, guys, soon the SAT, like the regular paper one will be um, obsolete and it's only going to be all digital in the US and as ready it is in international waters as well. So what you really got to do is make sure you start practicing the digital ST math problems because that way you're already exposed to language and that language is like, again, um, a little harder to understand. So just being exposed to it, going through the problems, going through the motions again and again and again and again and again and again, and again will literally drill it in your brain how to approach the st math problems and that way you're not like let's say st may they start switching the problems up into like digital st math problems like the same wording you're gonna be like whoa what's going on and then you might mess up on the st may exam then have to take st june exam which is more money and again more time and one of the biggest things you guys really have to practice is st math word problems because that's really what trips up a lot of students is st math word problems because you know when you're given an equation and you're told to solve x it's pretty easy to do because the equation is already written out for you sometimes when you have to figure out the equation yourself based on what's the y intercept what's the slope what's the uh, where's the quadratic going is it positive or negative is the exponential rate of uh, is exponential growth or decay being able to figure that out and create an equation to model that trips up a lot of students you know which makes sense because it's not something you really do in your everyday math class but 
being able to do that is like a very it's like a necessity on the st math exam if you can't do that you're not going to be able to go really that far so make sure you practice your st math word problems you know start underlining the important information most of the word like the word problem itself is like bs you really don't need a lot of it just highlight the numbers and like any keywords such as increase growth decay decrease stagnant um something like that and now we can talk about reading all right so for reading there's really like a couple of questions if you like practice a lot you're gonna get a high score regardless and that the first one really is practicing the evidence-based questions where you know you have it's like a two set right you got the first question then you got the next question saying which line support your answer to the previous question these problems are these questions are kind of gimme questions because if you get one right you're nearly guaranteed to get the other right now if you get one wrong you also nearly guarantee get the other one wrong but sometimes what i like to do is um let's say there's a problem and i don't know which is the correct answer either b or c what i would do is i'll pick b and then for the evidence part where it's like which line support i'll pick the lines that support c that way i know i'm gonna get at least one of these two questions correct yes now not not at least at most because one supports the other choice that i didn't pick and the choice i picked is supported by the other choice i didn't pick if that makes sense so basically i'm gonna only get one of them right but that's like a neat trick to do which obviously shouldn't do a lot but it's a neat trick to do so, such that let's say you're like oh man these i don't want to get both these problems wrong right i'll get at least one of them right so in that way what i have to do is split that so i'm guaranteed to get one of these problems right now and i'm also guaranteed to only get one of these problems right you can only do that trick when it's 50 50 shot that's also kind of giving up and be like yeah i'm probably not gonna get both of these questions right so let me just get one of them right right so whether you want to do that or not that's entirely up to you uh you can decide that personally i will you know go big or go home right just try to make sure you get the original question right and that way you get the evidence-based part right as well and it shouldn't be too hard right just use sometimes use the lines to help you go through the passage instead of reading the entire passage ever since lines 6 to 11 11 to 18 18 27 27 to uh, 41 only read those lines all right uh and your answer will be given to you in those lines okay you don't need to start going through the whole passage and figuring things out yourself you just use those lines to guide you to the answer and a lot of students don't realize that and that saves so much time another thing is to treat the reading section as a pattern based exam like i said guys these problems are repeated over and over again just different names different words ideas the same uh, main idea questions uh, main purpose what does this word mean this line it's all the same motions so if you constantly rehearse and practice st reading exams digital and non-digital you're gonna start seeing like okay this is how you answer this question okay this is how you answer this question and if you still don't see it you can always check out my st reading course which has all the information you possibly can need when it comes to st reading exam for digital and non-digital such that you can get a perfect score and my last st reading tip is to hone in on the science passages because now this is loki uh, a personal tip but i realized that as someone who sucked at st reading doing the science passages was the easiest part that like i would ace the science passages and because it's non-fiction right like the, the answers aren't up to your personal opinion they aren't based on your judgment they're based on hard facts that can be found within the passage like cold hard evidence caught in 4k type stuff so these the sd science passage is like the easiest passage so you guys really should make sure you maximize the science passage and constantly rehearse it on khan academy and try to get 11 out of 11 on these i know sometimes i would say if you get a 9 or a 10 you're good but no with the science passage try to get an 11 out of 11 that way you have some cushion to get questions wrong on like the harder passages such as history or maybe narrative so really make sure you hone in on the science passage and i cover all types of passages in my course as well how to get perfect score on all of them be sure to check the course out there's a sale going on on that as well so thank you all for watching hopefully you ace the sd may exam peace <laughs>